So you have a monoblock amplifier. Heard there's a possibility with a second one you could possibly strap them up to get more power. What's that all about? This is not a Mickey Mouse program! Rage on that beat going crazy. One of my favorite monoblock amps is this JP8 from Down for Sound. Has been for quite a while. Done several videos on this amp. Check the link in the video description if you want to catch back up on those. This amp is just awesome. It does work with most factory electrical systems. Puts out plenty of power, over 1,200 watts at 1 ohm, providing at 14.4 volts. But it made me think, what if you have one of these amps and you want more power? Yes, we can do something called strapping or linking. Now, of course, you can move up to the JP23, which is a larger amplifier. But let's say you have a JP8 and you went ahead and purchased another one. At the time of this video, there are two different models of the version 1 and the version 1.5. There are very few differences, the bass knob, the fan, a couple other things like that. But overall, virtually the same amp. As far as the guts go, it definitely is the same amp. This amp is a budget amp. As far as the original goes, 179 bucks. The new one is 199 These are non-sale prices. So if you purchase the original JP8 and decide, hey, I want to strap these up and get some more power. 850 watts times one for one amp, and it says linked is 2300 for two, I'm not sure about that new math, should be 1700 watts. You're not mysteriously going to get more power than each individual amp times two. Just doesn't work that way. Now let's talk about how to strap up these amplifiers and we're not going to use a ratchet strap. Some things to note when you're strapping. Must be a half bridge mono capable of strapping. Must be the same brand and model. If one ohm's stable, you can only link it at two ohms. Check your owner's manual to find out how to strap your amp. If it is strapping capable, it should talk about it. Whether you need a sync cable or just an RCA cable, it just depends on the manufacturer. In this case, the negative terminals for the speaker outputs connect each other on the amplifiers. We'll show it here. You see I just have a single 8 gauge going between the two JP8s. Also, you have to run the positive of amplifier 1 to the speaker positive. Then the positive output of amplifier 2 goes to the speaker negative, as shown here in the photo illustration. Now as far as signal goes, your master amplifier receives the RCA from your source, as shown here connected up. Then we're going to make sure the amplifier is set to the master mode, which it should be by default. Then we're going to run an RCA, in this case a single cable, from the single amplifier, the master amplifier, over to the slave amplifier and also ensure that it's switched over to slave or secondary for the secondary amplifier. Now all the controls are handled on the primary amplifier, not the secondary amplifier. Again, all the instructions I'm showing here are for the Down for Sound JP amplifiers, but they're similar across different models. Just make sure you check with your manufacturer or your owner's manual. First up, we have the JP8 amplifiers wired strapped up. Let's see what the RMS power output is shown on the left, the ohm load in the middle, the voltage of the dyno on the right. Let's fire it up. This here's my favorite part. First up, linked at 4 ohms, which presents a 2 ohm load per amp. 650 watts times 2 is 1300 watts. The 4 ohm load is equivalent to a 2 ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in series or two 4 ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel. Let's try the test first certified, which tests up to 1% distortion. Again, rated about 1300 watts. We get 1635 at 14.19. Next up, we'll do the uncertified test, which takes us to the clipping point of the amplifier. We should get more power here. Again, all these tests are run at 40 hertz, 1743 watts, right at 14 volts. Now the dynamic test sends a pulse tone of 40 hertz into the amplifier, kind of simulating a kick drum hit. Dynamic power, here we go. Over 2100 watts, 2128 at 14.88. Now what about the efficiency with both amps? We measured 68 and a half, which I went back and thought, huh, it's not quite as good as the 81% that I got with the single JP8. Next up, we'll try two ohm strap. It's rated 2300 watts, which is weird because it's 850 watts per amp. Either way, this simulates a single four ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in parallel or dual two ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel. Here we go. Certified test first, a 1% distortion. 2235 watts, we're at 14, so we're a little bit under 14.4, even though with that whack math they provided uh, we still almost got that 2300. 
Uncertified up to clipping, we definitely get that and more. 2467 at 13.79. Dynamically, here we go. Send the pulse tone into the amp. 3400. Yes, 3439 at 14.31. Efficiency dropped even more, 59% with the two amps linked together. Whereas individually, we got 74% at one ohm for the single JP8. So I know what some of you are thinking. I need more power. I mean, 2300 watts is just not enough. So you've got a down for sound JP23, in this case, 2300 watt amp, and say, well, they got this purple version just came out. Can I wire up the purple one and the black one? Well, in this case, you can because they're essentially the same amp as far as the circuit board goes. This purple one just has this beautiful anodized finish. Comes with this really cool bass knob that looks like a miniature amplifier. It is aluminum and it has all the different settings that you need. And yeah, this is the original JP23 that I bought way back in the day. And uh, one thing to realize is you can't use the version 2 with the version 1 or 1.5. That amp is different. Now, as far as the 1.5, these are right at $300 at the time of this video. Rated 2300 watts for one amp at one ohm or 4600 for both amps linked together at two ohms. And again, let's strap them up, see what they do. Dummy. Now, since I'm very socially conscious, I wired the black colored amplifier as the master and the purple one as the secondary or slave amplifier. Four ohms linked, rated 2600 watts or 1300 watts each. Let's try the certified test first, 1% distortion. See if we get that 2600 very easily. 3,183 watts. Our voltage is a little strong at 14.8, but it wouldn't be that much different to drop it to 14.4. Uncertified up to clipping. Again, just blowing the ratings here out of the water. 3,262 watts at 14.6. And then we'll try the dynamic test and we're gonna have probably around 15 volts. Strong voltage here from the LTO bank. 3,354 watts at 14.86. Now let's check the efficiency with the strap damps. We got right about 77.5%, which is good. And then we check the individual amp that we tested before and around 77%. So in this case, looks like the JP23s work well strapped and keep that efficiency up. Two ohms is rated 4,600 watts linked together. Let's see what we get here. Certified, 1% distortion, 5,000. 10 watts at 14.57 volts. Next up, we'll try the uncertified test up to the clipping point again. I'm sure we're gonna bust that 5,000 watts easily. Almost 5,300 watts, 5,297 at 14.36. And finally here, we're gonna run the dynamic burst test and we're, <laughs> we're getting close to 6,000 watts, 59.73 right at 15 volts. And again, let's check the efficiency of the strapped amp, 69% at two ohms strapped and one ohm individually, 71%. So again, very close to the strapped and the individual amp. Now let's talk about pros and cons of strapping amplifiers. First up, you buy one amp now, you can buy another later, that is a good thing. You get double the power, of course. You only have one base knob that controls both amps. Also, all the settings or controlled by the master or main amp. That way, it's easy to control both amplifiers that way. As for the cons, you do have to wire two amplifiers up, power, ground, remote turn on, all that stuff. You will need more space required for two amps. You must match the amps, make sure it's the same model, same brand, all that. There's possible efficiency loss, as you saw with the JP8s. It's cheaper to buy one larger amp overall. You may need a special sync cable, depending on the brand, and be careful with impedance, of course, if your amp is rated one ohm, make sure you don't go lower than two ohm strapped. I had a lot of people request over the years to show off strapped amplifiers. A, how it works. B, what kind of power you get out. Just understand you're not going to get more than two times what one amplifier does. So if one amplifier does a thousand watts, you're not going to get more than 2000 strapped. Just doesn't work that way. But it is a convenient way to add more power to your system without having to buy a bigger amp. You just buy a matching one to the one that you have. So thanks as always for watching. This video was not sponsored. I did buy the products for this video. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here.
All right, just for kicks, I do not recommend this, but we're gonna try the dynamic test at 1.3. That puts about a 0.67 ohm load per test. But again, this is uh, re resistive loads, not reactive like a speaker. So this is much harder on the amplifier. So I expect they may go into protect. Let's try it out and see. Eight thousand thirty one watts linked fourteen point nine six volts one point three three ohms. Wow. All right, I can't remember going back if this amp would do point six seven each one individually on the certified run, but uh, we've got them strapped together, so one point three three ohms is about point six seven per amp. And again, this is a resistive load, which means it does not fluctuate based on frequency temperature, time, uh, the humidity doesn't affect anything. This stays 1.33 ohms. So this is a brutal test for an amp, but we're gonna try it real quick here. Hopefully we don't blow it up because I really like these amps, but let's try it here. Certified. fifty nine thirty six fourteen point three five. You can check out this and you can also do the calculation and say that efficiency is not very good, but the amp did not go into protect. They're both still blue. Good to go. These amps are beast. There you go.